your life is your mission. Me, Ivo, I think we have to clarify this for the listeners. Again, there seems to be a misperception among many of you who we're channeling for. You ask what your mission is, and I understand that you feel that there is something specific you've come here to do. For many of you, there is. And we can tell you. However, I also feel that there's a reluctance to do anything because you're waiting to find out what your mission is. Don't wait. Your mission could be anything to improve life on Earth, because that's what you came here for. Every time you pick up a piece of garbage and dispose of it properly. Every time you help a little old lady cross the street. Every time you work for a day at the food bank, every time you donate to the food bank or to a legitimate charity, and I emphasize legitimate because many of the big ones are crooked. Every time you say a kind word to someone else, every time you do a favor for a friend. That is your mission. You're here to do good. You're here to anchor the new world onto Gaia's soil. You're here to enact new world values. That means being nice, not being taken advantage of, but doing kind deeds and helping others. They say, be the change you want to see in the world, and this is what we're talking about. I also believe that we're being tested. Do you take opportunities to help others, or do you stand on the sidelines, waiting to understand what you've come here to do before you act? Your soul wants to see you get in there and create change. It wants to see how action-oriented you are about getting anything done. Before Ivo came through, I used to clean up the street in front of my apartment. Either windstorms or sloppy garbage people left all kinds of trash on the street, so I went out and cleaned it. I was praised by many people walking by that they should do the same thing too. Well, be careful of the word should because it means you want to do something or know you should, but you're not going to. It often stinks of guilt and guilt is not a true motivator. You'll never hear Ivo tell you you should do anything. He will ask or suggest, but he won't guilt trip you. This is because benevolent ETS don't work at the frequency of guilt. Don't let what other people are or are not doing influence you one iota. If the street needs cleaning, go out and pick it up. You'll like it better when you see it. That is an example of working for the greater good, everyone benefits and you get to enjoy it too. Like he said, Imagine how much more you'd love your neighbors if you knew you would benefit from everything they did. Ivo's suggestion was to go and volunteer. Do anything, whatever looks appealing to you. If you don't like it, try something else. But the very fact that you're helping out will help to open your heart and move you that much closer to understanding your soul's will for you, because that's where your ultimate mission lies. Your soul knows that information and your soul is all about helping others. Please don't think, well, I won't change until I know what my mission is, then I'll work in that direction. You are undergoing a process of changing yourself in order to enable yourself to understand your ultimate mission, so all of it is related anyway. It's called your life. Ivo, the first step to this is to work on moving out of matrix thinking. That is part of your mission. In changing your thinking, in becoming an authentic human being, not upon playing a role in an economic system. There is always work to do in this regard. Work on liberating your mind. That is job number one and you are being helped with this through your guides and angels. The second part of your mission is to see God working in everything around you. Yesterday, Sharon was driving into Dairy Queen, which is situated on an awkward corner in her city. She saw the long line up so she passed by the first entrance. This necessitated her turning right on a yield, and then having to make a fast right again to go into the parking lot. A pickup truck was right behind her and as the driver turned his head he saw Sharon's brake lights on in front of him. A boy was bicycling on the sidewalk, blocking Sharon's entry into the parking lot. For a split second, Sharon experienced the sheer terror of being powerless to do anything to avoid being rear-ended by the truck, but she would have gladly taken the hit to protect that boy. Me, yes, I'm still teary-eyed over this. Ivo, my love, you were vulnerable. 
and this was the depths that your fear of vulnerability will go to. However, you were a stalwart, willing to sacrifice your beloved car and your own health, for the boy's life. Me, I think God should instruct some construction workers to change that corner from a yield to a full stop and turn right, same as any other light. Then going into DQ wouldn't be so hazardous. I might suggest that to the city, in fact. I think utilizing any efforts to increase driver awareness and to slow down traffic are good ideas. Ivo, yes, they are. Me, does God just have funny ways of getting me to give up my peanut buster parfait habit? He knows I only eat them when it gets really really bad, otherwise I eat low carb ice cream. Ivo, lol God is trying to show you that he is always there for you. For those who have accidents, you have more to learn about yourself by having the accident than by not having it. You were shown how brave you are in the face of complete powerlessness, and you were shown that when all else fails for you, God will be there for you, as he told you he would be. Because nothing happened. Me, nothing. I'm still crying over this. I'd rather face men in black. They don't scare me. Accidents involving children are horrific. Come to think of it, I think Sydney Street is a raceway and that's the corner the DQ is on. They should put in more lights, maybe one at the intersection of 13th. Then people would be able to get out of there too. Just a thought. Anyway. Ivo, these are occurrences for you to understand more about yourself, and to understand the nature of reality. There was nothing for you to learn by this accident, so it did not happen. You made the right choice, the only one you could. If you were more of the mindset to sacrifice that child, then the accident might well have occurred. It is your own mindset that keeps you safe from accidents. The other thing you must acknowledge is that God comes to you through other people. All people are aspects of the whole, of God. Instead of anger at them for their wrongdoings, look at what gift they have to give you. What are they showing you about yourself? What should you change? Me, yes, I cursed that truck driver, that's for sure. Ivo, and this was the wrong thing to do. However I understand you have the fight or flight response and your way of fighting is to become angry. That is your initial response. Then you flee when you feel overwhelmed. In fact he showed you the power of God working in your life. And he showed you that you would sacrifice yourself for any person, because had this been an adult, you would have stopped as well, of course. Me, of course. But I know that. I'm one who would die for another person. Ivo, that is what makes you a light worker, my love. That is why you came to Earth now. So many of you have negative epithets for so many others around you. This is because you are resisting seeing the God in them, because you are resisting seeing the God within yourselves. Your guides are showing you what you can aspire to, if you only look at the lesson. They can help you get there as well. Resist it and you will attract more people for you to get angry at to you. This is so common among you. You believe everyone else is your problem, when in fact they are all diamonds in the rough. Learn to see them that way and you will see how God works. His ways are not mysterious at all. The mystery is you do not understand them nor do you work his ways. Understand as well, that people will stop being assholes for you when you stop calling them such. Stop the words from coming out of your mouth. Stop the process. Breathe through the painful feelings they have touched in you but do not cuss them out. Focus on understanding yourself, not projecting your anger at them. Work your altercations differently and you will require fewer of them. The third part of your mission is to be grateful for everything. Even for your hard lessons. Many of you are not. You hate being on earth, but it is because you do not have an attitude of gratitude, that you are not looking for the good things, you only see what you label to be the bad things, so you dislike your life. You feel that it is better out there for you in the galaxy so you want to be there, not on earth. This is a trap that the dark ones have set for star seeds. You are creating lush, thereby helping them out, not the light. 
another part of your mission, do not create lush. Ivo, we have discussed this before, and in the interests of saving time, we will refer to our lush series videos. Another part of your mission, embrace all that is new and innovative. Why? Because these are the seedlings of the new world. Investigate herbals, holistic medicines, and new medical technologies. Become an aware consumer. Ivo, this relates to the above. What you purchase you get more of. Consumer demand is important so spend your money wisely. These are ways you can tune into your mission. By changing and upgrading yourself from your matrix self. The self your parents taught you. Instead of ibuprofen use turmeric for pain. Instead of ibuprofen use cannabis oil for headaches. Look for the cause of the headache within yourself and relieve the energy that is producing the headache. There are many things you can do right now without actually understanding your primary purpose on earth. Me, thanks, Ivo. Ivo, yes, much healing. You believed God had abandoned you. How can he when he asked you to come here? What stops you from knowing a loving God is your own unloving ideas.